So in the series of learning C programming, we are discussing structures in C. In the previous video, we have discussed how to declare variable of a structure or you can say how to declare object of a structure. So now in this video, we will see how to initialize the structure and how to access the members of the structure, how to assign values to the structure members like we have taken roll number, name, marks, how to assign the values to roll number like roll number is equal to 1, how we are going to initialize those members, right? And now how we will access those members and how we are going to print the values whatever you have assigned, compile time initialization as well as run time initialization, both we will discuss with the help of a program. But before that, I just want to tell you one thing, if you are preparing for gate 2022 examination, then An Academy brings you the gate Yoda's free test series targeting gate 2022. This three test series consist of three rounds. In round one, you will get 15 question and time limit would be 45 minutes. Round two will have 30 questions to be solved in 90 minutes and final round will be having 65 questions and time limit would be 180 minutes. So the, these tests are designed to help you to track your overall uh, preparation for gate examination. And you can take these tests for free. One more thing, they are also going to conduct a scholarship test for gate and ESC that would be on 21st of November. So here you can compete with thousands of learners and you stand a chance to win up to 100% scholarship. You will get in this test you will get, you will get 20 questions and those quest, questions has been curated by their best gate and ESC educators. And the time limit would be 60 minutes. So you can assess your gate preparation in just 60 minutes. You can see how you rank against all the others from all over India on live leaderboard that would be updated after every question. So here you can measure your progress with the help of personalized scoring and rating that would be given to you. And after every contest, detailed video solutions would be given to you by their experts. So you can identify your weak areas and you can improve and uh, so that you get, you get it right next time. And you can take this test for free. You just have to enroll the enrollment link. I'll put in the description box of this video. Just click to that link, scroll down, pick up the right test for you and just click enroll and use my code JKL10 uh, to unlock the test. And if you take the scholarship test live, then you will also get a chance to win some exciting prizes. So the relevant links and the details I'll put in the description box of this video, you can go and check out. So now let's see how to initialize that um, structure. Let us take the, the example that we have taken in the previous video. So how you can declare the variable of this data type because the structure in this is all user defined data type. Or you can have to uh, declare the object. Just write the name of this data type, struct student, this complete is data type, struct student, now the name of the variable, I am taking suppose S, right. So how we will initialize these members, like I want to take values in these members, these are structure members. So can I write here roll number is equal to 1, this would be wrong, because we cannot initialize here, this is what just a template, here memory has not been allocated, so I cannot store any value, so that would be wrong. So how you will initialize? Like here, what I can write while declaring this object, this variable of this structure, here only you can initialize. This is compile time initialization. Same, like we can take here what? If you take int a, if you want to initialize this at compile time, directly write down int a is equal to 5. If I take like char name is equal to 20, any variable, simple variable. So here, simply you can write down like name is equal to gen. This is what compile time initialization. So same here you can initialize. But here, how many values you are supposed to initialize? One is roll number, then name, then marks. So first is what roll number. So I am going to write one, comma, name, that would be string, suppose I am writing Jenny, comma, then marks, I am writing, suppose marks are 90.91 and semicolon. This is what simple compile time initialization of these members, that's it. At runtime also you can initialize using printf and scan that also we'll discuss, right? Now, one thing you need to take care about this, some rules of this initialization is what? This order would be same. If first is int, first should be int. Next one is string, then string, float, hair, float. Means the order should match. If you write here like, first I'm writing Jenny, then one, then 90 point this, this then it would be wrong. Maybe it will give some garbage value or it will you know, give some error. Because this is first what we, it is expecting integer value but you are providing j that is string. So how it will store this value? So the orders, this order should match. This is the first point. Second point is what? If you are not initializing like here I am writing only one. 
this is what partial initialization. So, this one first this value first of all obviously should be assigned to this first variable. So, roll number would be 1 and the remaining would be what null automatically the compiler will, initi will initialize these string to null this float to 0. By default intent float would be initialized with a 0 and the string and character would be initialized with null right. So, now next uh, point about this is what if you do not want an initial in, uh, do not want to take this variable here you can just omit this and here only I want to uh, declare the variable. So, here also you can initialize like s is equal to here you can write 1 jenny and suppose 90.91 and semicolon that is also fine right. Now, what you can do if you want to take suppose two variables two objects s1 and s2. So, here how you will take like it is not like that here I am taking s1 then initialize it and after that I am writing s2 and the values that would be wrong right because we have used the semicolon after that this s2 would not be considered as object of this structure the variable of this data type this this structure right. So, now how you can do that thing suppose I am taking here two variables like s1 equal to here you can initialize and another is struct student s2. So, I am just writing the values some values here this is also fine you can take how many you know uh, variables how many objects you want s1, s2, s3, 4, 5, 6 it is up to you right. But suppose if you want to take like 60 uh, uh, variables or you can say I want to store uh, information of 60 students. So, it is not a good idea to take s1, s2, s3 up to 60 variables no that I will take array array of this object that we will discuss in next video right. Now, one more thing about this is what if you will take something like this this is also fine right. So, now and if you want to take here like one variable here s here you can initialize the, that variable like s is equal to 3 or any like 35 and name is like Ankur and roll numbers are suppose I am taking here uh, sorry marks are suppose I am taking 70 that is also fine 3 object we have created s s1 s and s2 right. Before you know outside this main also you can write down like I am not writing this main function. And after just writing this s you can write one variable like this and after this you just write down these two statements and so three variables will be created one is s, s1 and s2 right. So, it is not compulsory that you are supposed to write down this these statements in main only outside main also you can initialize you can declare the variables of the structure that is also fine right. If you take outside main like I am declaring this structure outside this main. So, this is what global you can access this this structure in any function in main function or suppose you have in your program you have two three more functions there also you can use this one. In every function you can declare these type of variables right and you can access these members right. So, I hope this is clear how to initialize these members of the structure how to initialize this structure right and some rules about initialization of the structure like order should match if you do not write down the all the values like I am writing only one. So, this one would be assigned to this row number you this is partial initialization, but if you are doing partially initialization then the first the, these members should be initialized you can leave the end members like it is not like that here I want to initialize I want to you know initialize only marks not row number and name. So, I will write 90.91. So, it will be initialized the marks would be this and this would be 0 and null no by default the, it is the first first value that would be given to the first member here roll number would be this 90 it is integer. So, maybe it will take 90 only not flow or maybe it will take some garbage value this you need to take care right. Now, how to access these members suppose I want to print so, I have initialized this thing right and I have taken only these two uh, objects like s1 and s2 and I want to print these values. So, what you will write printf percentage d and see this individual name roll number you cannot write down here roll number 
and it will print some value like roll number value which roll number it will print simple roll number it it doesn't have any meaning you cannot access these members by writing the name only the name of the variable only these are not simple variable you are supposed to link these variable name with the structure with the structure object right if i write here like s1 dot roll number yeah now this is having some meaning it is what roll number of s1 so it is a variable representing what roll number of s1 fine so this is how you can access these members object name dot operator or it is known as member operator then the member name structure member name right so if you are going to print this s1 dot roll number so it will print s1 dot roll number means 1 right here we have in memory for s1 and s2 s1 roll number is 1 this is what roll number this is for name and this space is for marks same for s2 roll number name and marks so here we have row number 1 but these two value we haven't initialized so this will take null and this will take 0 so if you will print s1 dot name it will print null it will not print anything s1 dot marks it will print 0 0, 0.000 like this because it is float right in s2 we have in row number we have 2 in name we have gia and here we have marks 85 so how you will print this information simply you can write down here s2 dot row number so it will print now 2 s2 dot name percentage s s2 dot name it will print gia s2 dot marks percentage f s2 dot marks it will print 85.000 to 6 zeros after decimal right so this is how you can access these members using dot operator this is very important right and here you can also initialize these members suppose i will not i am not going to initialize here this thing right simply s1 s2 is this so what you can write s1 is equal to s2 this will work you can copy these, these values so whatever the value in s2 these value would be copied for s1 also so in s1 also now we have 2 we have here gia and here we have 85 same values we have so that's fine to you next some point is what s1 dot roll number this is also fine roll number is equal to 1 s1 dot name is equal to jenny and s1 dot marks is equal to 90 so individual members also you can initialize but like this not here so at this point time point of time s1 roll number is equal to 1 here we have jenny and marks we have 90 right using printf and scanf also this is what compile time initialization now what about runtime initialization using printf and scanf you can take these values like uh, you can uh, write down here printf enter information for s1 right so i'm simply writing scanf scanf is equal to percentage d address of what s1 dot roll number not s address of roll number s1 dot roll number next scanf percentage s ad, address of s1 dot name and same scanf percentage f as address of s1 dot marks so this is how at runtime you can initialize at the runtime it will ask from the user like enter information for s1 and then you will enter and after that you can print how you can print that we have already discussed and here uh, like at the place of if you write down here string so you can omit this address of operator you can simply write down s1 dot name that is also fine right now uh, next is what see you can write down here if you are not entering this information and if you want to copy this information in s1 so s1 is equal to s2 that is fine but this is valid only because this s1 and s2 are of same type struct student the data type is same if we have one more structure like struct employee right and struct employee we have declared a variable e and struct student s1 
or structure in S2. In that case, we cannot write E is equal to S2. That would be wrong. These are of same type. This is why this copy allowed. Copy of these you know, uh, object values are allowed. See, suppose I am taking here 1 and Jenny and 90. See, one thing you cannot compare these objects like S1 greater than S2 or S1 less than S2. This would be wrong. How you can compare these objects, right? Or you can say S1 equal to equal to S2. This equality condition we cannot check. check. S1 not equal to S2. This would not be allowed, right? Yeah, but you can compare individual members of these objects. How? See, I can write here if S1 dot row number less than S2 dot row number. Here simply you can write something like uh, I just print print F high. Yeah, that is fine. S1 dot row number is what? 1. S2 dot row number is what? 2. Is this condition true? 1 less than 2? Yes, condition true. So, it will print high. Individual members you can compare. Marks you can compare. This string you can compare using string compare function. Right? But these objects directly you cannot compare. Right? So, now I hope this is clear to you how to initialize the structure, how to access these members of the structure. Right? So, now let me show you practically this thing on my laptop. Let me take a simple program and I will show you. So, now let me create a file structure 1.c. Okay. Here we will take struct m I am taking student and I am taking int row number then name marks right and in main only I am taking I am declaring struct student s1 Right, and I am initializing this here like uh, first we have row number, then 1, then string, so Jenny, then I am taking like marks 90. Struct student second is what S2 is equal to row number, I am taking 2, then name Gia and marks, suppose I am taking 85. Right. So, now if you want to print this printf uh, information for S1, this you want to print. Right. So, what it will be printed? Printf, you will write here first is what percentage D, then percentage s then percentage f right and I am printing s1 dot the name then s1 dot name then s1 dot marks right same for S2 you can print this thing, but for S2 like you can you are supposed to write what S2 here also S2 name of the object S2 right and here I am writing printf info for S2 I am writing right this is what compile time initialization now let me just run this and see what you are getting over oh, this is error struct right now ok now one error is what here we are supposed to write semicolon now let me just run this and see what output you are getting 
See, info for S1 is 1 JNE 90, info for S2 is 2 GI 85. This is how you can access. This is called compile time initialization. If I am not writing anything here, like I am not writing anything in S2, and I am here, I, here I am writing S2 is equal to S1, right? And now let me just run this and see what output you are getting. For every for S1 and S2, same information 1 JNE 90, 1 JNE 90, right? So, this is fine. Here also you can write down like I am writing any uh, name S, S equal to you can initialize it something like this. I am taking only roll number that is it and here I am printing the information for S also like info for S3 I am taking suppose this is S3 right. Yeah. S3. So, info for S3 is what? S3 dot roll number, then S3, then here also S3, right? Now, let me just save it and run it, see what output you are getting. See, for S1, S2, both are same for S3, only 2 you are getting. Then name at the place of name it is blank because it is null, it is not printing anything and for marks it is float 0, 0.000 ok because you have initialized only row number 2. But here if you write here suppose name like I am uh, writing here pile and now let me just run this and see what output you get. See here some garbage value then nothing then 0 because pile is what string and first is what it is supposed to be integer. So, it is printing any garbage value. Now, name is what obviously null and marks would also be null uh, sorry 0 right. So, this is what some garbage value then null and then 0 right. So, order you are supposed to match first is roll number. So, one first value should be integer suppose I am writing here 3 that is fine. Now, next next what you can write here if you do not want to declare these these uh, values in main, you can declare these outside main here that is also fine. But now see what output you will get see for S1 and S2 same because we are writing S2 is equal to S1 and for S3 only 3 that is it. So, outside main also you can uh, uh, take these objects right. Next point was what? Using scanf how you can take right. So, uh, for uh, roll number for S2 I am going to take printf enter info for S2. This I will take using scanf. So, what you can write scanf percentage d and what address of S to dot roll number right. And then uh, in the same line I am writing percentage s and uh, percentage f. So, address of s 2 dot roll number then comma s 2 dot name then comma s 2 dot marks right and after that I am printing this. So, I am just deleting this line. Now, let me run this and see what output you get. See first it is asking enter info for S2. So, first is what roll number, next would be name suppose I am writing here Akash, next would be marks for 45 or 54 it should be address of s2 dot marks right. Now, let me just run this and see what output you get. Information for s2 roll number is 3, name is what suppose jk marks 56. See for s1 1 jn this for s2 roll number we have entered what 3 name is jk and marks 56 point this this and for s3 uh, obviously we have initialized in 3 only. So, using scanf also you can take this runtime initialization of this uh, you know members of this structure right. 
So, I guess this is fine all the points we have cleared. So, now in the next video we will see how to take array of these structure objects. So, now in the next video till then bye bye take care.